Hey y'all, what's up? My name is Avery and today I'm going to be talking about all of the books that I read in April. So I had a really good reading month in April despite all of the horrible stress of school. I ended up reading 19 books in the month of April and I read a wide range of formats this month. So I ended up reading eight audiobooks, listening to eight audiobooks. I read six physical books and five ebooks. So I did not listen to audiobooks this month, which is amazing. And it's probably because I'm not walking to class every day. So I had a lot more time to physically sit down and read a book or read a book on my phone or my Kindle app. So let's get started. As always, we're going to be talking about these books from my least favorite to my favorite of the month. And we'll start out actually with a book that I did not finish. We have the Moment of Letting Go by J.A. Renmierski. I maybe got 60 pages into this book and put it down. I did not want to read any more of it. I don't think I will ever pick this book back up again, honestly, which is kind of disappointing because I really liked another J.A. Renmierski book that I read a couple years ago. It's one of my favorite romances, so I thought that maybe this would fit the bill for that, but sadly no. This is a book about Sienna and Luke and they meet in Hawaii. Luke lives in Hawaii and Sierra is taking like a two-day vacation slash she's working on a wedding there for two days. She's like a wedding planner I believe. They meet on the beach and he's a big surfer dude and she does not want a relationship and then he doesn't want a relationship because he has this horrible troubled past but they can't help but feel connected to each other the first time that they see each other and they're drawn to each other like oh it just I knew what was gonna happen, it was very cliche, and uh, didn't want to read it. Next we have a book that I did not end up rating because I don't know what to rate this book, honestly. We have Born to be Bound by Addison Kane. I talk about most of these books in reading vlogs that I have done. This was a very big portion of one of my reading vlogs that I have, and I talk about how <laughs> This book kind of threw me for a loop. So this book is about Claire and she's an Omega. This is a wolf shifter romance book and it's her romance with Shepard. And Shepard is like the alpha to these wolves, like the alpha of the alpha in this city. And the Omegas are dying out, they're being starved. So Claire goes to the alpha to ask him for food and help for the Omegas. Turns out she goes into heat while she is in his like throne room or whatever. Triggers his like alpha whatever and he kills like 10 other alphas in the room to get her and he pair mates or pair bonds with her which you can only do once in your entire life and puts her in like a concrete four walls concrete walls room with only a bed a table a bookcase and just leaves her there to be his pair mate and basically sexually assaults her. When your paramate purrs to you, apparently your body like responds to that and really craves that person, but she as a person inside does not want him. He's like abusing her basically. It's just, it was, it was like disturbing. It was dark. I don't know how to like talk about this book honestly. Like I was, I was addicted just to the point where I wanted to know what happens. I wanted to know if she got out of there. And also like, I wanted to know how this was a romance between these two people when he's like sexually assaulting her every single day. I stayed up till two o'clock in the morning to read this book because I wanted to know how this was even gonna be a romance. Apparently it's a trilogy. So you have to read the next two books to figure out their story, which I don't see someone forgiving someone for doing that you know? And like, I'm not going to continue on with the rest of the series. Each ebook is like $8. I just, I don't know what to rate this book, honestly. And it was weird because I even said in my reading vlog, I don't really recommend this book at all. And I got like five comments saying, oh, I'm going to check out this book now. Oh, I'm going to check out this book now. And I'm like, why would you? I literally said, I don't recommend it. So if you go into this book thinking, oh, Avery recommended this book to me. No, I didn't. I did not recommend it. <laughs> I'm just telling you, this was a wild, wild ride that I don't want to continue on with. <laughs> Next we have an alien romance story. We have Accidental Abduction by Eve Langlius. I'm sorry for butchering that last name. This one I gave 2.5 stars. This one is on Audible Escape if you're interested. This girl gets abducted by this purple alien, but like by accident. She's like in the middle of the ocean because her ex-boyfriend was only her boyfriend because he wanted to basically take all of her money. Her and her ex-boyfriend go on this yacht or this boat in the middle of the ocean as like, just like a trip 
to the middle of the ocean and her boyfriend like throws her overboard and like steals all of her money and drives off on the boat leaving her in the center of the ocean and she ends up getting accidentally abducted by this purple alien this alien wanted fish from earth and so his like job is to like get animals from planets he like uses his alien powers or ship powers to like raise the fish out of the water and bring them to the spaceship and she's there too and so he accidentally abducts her with all of these fish and um, it's like their romance it's a it's a weird one not my favorite alien romance that's for sure so I gave this one a 2.5 out of 5 stars <laughs> next we have blind beast mate by Milana Jax now this one is another alien ish romance these aliens have inhabited earth they're kind of like the superior race now of earth they're called the beasts this girl she is blind her uncle sells her to an alpha beast to be his mate she tries to hide the fact that she's blind from her new mate that she is kind of scared of because he's like the alpha of alphas of aliens. I didn't really enjoy this one as much as I thought I would. It's very 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 short. I listened to it on Audible Escape. It was only like two and a half hours long so it was really short. I gave this one a three stars but now I'm leaning more towards a 2.5. I would really love to hear someone's opinion if they are visually impaired if this representation was done well because I don't I don't know. Like I honestly I don't think it is. I'm not visually impaired though, so I wouldn't know. Next, I have Bound to Submit by Laura Kay. This one is only 130 pages, so I read it in about a day and a couple of hours. This one is about a main character named Kenna. She was in the Marines and she ended up losing part of her arm and lost her best friend in the Marines due to an IED getting exploded. It's been like a year later and she's still going through a lot of crap in her mind. She starts to remember how before she was in the Marines how she would get her mind off of the hard things going on in her life and the way she did that was going to see Griffin Hudson in Blasphemy which is a BDSM club. So she goes back to this club seeking out Griffin to help her get her mind off of the things going on in her brain. Turns out before the Marines he rejected her even though she said she was starting to fall in love with him he rejected her and it's years later he totally regrets it he totally regrets having her leave him it's about them trying to get to know each other again and griffin trying to explain how he was wrong in the first place and how kenna has ptsd from the marines and losing her arm and her best friend this one was good i gave this one three stars i wanted more if this was a full-length story it would be so amazing it would it would be so amazing like we only get snippets after she's out of the marines and six years after they were first together if we got the storyline of them before it would have been so much better i did like the writing it's just i wanted more from this story so that's why i gave this one three out of five stars. Next I have Dirty English by Ilsa Madden Mills. This one is about our main character named Elizabeth Bennett and her romance with Declan. And this is a Pride and Prejudice new adult retelling. This takes place in college. So Elizabeth Bennett was sexually assaulted her senior year of high school prom night and she's still trying to get over that years later. She's a junior in college now. She has sworn ever since then she will never ever ever fall in love ever again. Because the last time she fell in love it led to something very traumatic. Then she meets our main character Declan Blay who is a fighter. He fights in an underground like fight club kind of. So these two characters go through a lot obviously. It was just it didn't it didn't work for me to be honest with you. It wasn't believable. I, I'm in college like it doesn't it didn't seem like a very believable college story. I just I didn't also believe their romance really. It was just like a, a mediocre romance read which is unfortunate. I gave this one three stars and it is also on Audible Escape if you want to check this one out. Next, we have a really fun one. We have Getting Lucky by Ellen Mint. This is a story inspired by St. Patrick's Day. I don't know if it's still free, but I got it for free um, on St. Patrick's Day, but I hadn't read it until April. This one is about our main character named Jess and she is the unluckiest woman in the whole world and she wakes up one morning to a tree that has fallen into her bedroom. Turns out her new next door neighbor accidentally cut down the tree into her bedroom. That neighbor may or may not be a leprechaun <laughs> even though he's giant and buff and uh 
really good looking. This is a very short, cute novella that I just had a really fun time reading, so I gave it a 3.5 out of 5 stars. Next, I have The Beast of Veswick by Emily Howard. This was our Lovely Ladies live show pick for the month of March and April. I will link our live show down below. It was on Ashley's channel. This is a historical romance that is a retelling of Beauty and the Beast and Taming of the Shrew. So instead of Belle being all nice to the Beast, she's a shrew to the Beast. <laughs> the Beast of Beswick, his name is Thane and he is scarred from being at war I believe. He stays in his manor all the time or his house all the time because he doesn't want anyone to see him because he thinks that people will judge him and he's kind of put on this rough exterior personality. And then there's our other main character Lady Astrid and she will stop at nothing to see her younger sister safe from a notorious scoundrel. And so the way that she can do that is by marrying someone. But she's a spinster and she was um, ruined in her debut because a man she rejected spread some horrible lie about her. And so everyone thinks that she's ruined when she's actually not. But the only person that will marry her or that she thinks will marry her is the Beast of Beswick. So she goes and proposes the idea of getting married to him. I talk about my thoughts way more in the live show obviously and I talked about this in my, one of my reading vlogs. I just this book is not memorable to me and also there was a lot of fighting. Since it was like a Teaming of the Shrew inspired story there was so much fighting. <laughs> like it got to a point where I was so bored and done with it because there was just fight after fight after fight after fight. I ended up just giving this one a three out of five stars. One minute Thane would want to be with this woman and then the next minute once she started showing him affection he would backtrack and take it back because he thinks that he's ugly and that he doesn't deserve her and it just got to a point where it was very repetitive and I was so done with it. But I did love the characters on their own, you know what I mean? Like Astrid was an amazing heroine when she wasn't fighting with the male main character and I also really love her sister and I can't wait for her book. Her book is next. Thane was a really interesting character to read about when he wasn't fighting with Astrid. <laughs> so overall it was an okay historical for me. Definitely not one of my favorites. Next I have Marcus by Anna Hackett. This is the first book in the Hell Squad series. I listened to this one on Audible Escape. To be honest I don't really remember a lot about this book because I read it at the beginning of the month. All I know is that it is a romance between Elle and Marcus and they're both part of this Hell Squad where they go out and defeat the aliens that have invaded Earth. They've always had secret feelings for each other but they've never said anything about it. I honestly don't remember. <laughs> anything about this book. So I probably should drop my rating from a four, but I really did enjoy it at the time. So that's why I gave it a four. <laughs> Next I have The Bromance Book Club by Lissa K. Adams. So this is about a main character named Gavin. His marriage is about to collapse. His wife wants a divorce from him, but he does not want that. He loves his wife so 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 much and wants to fix what he has essentially broken. So he's on a baseball team. A bunch of his other players and a bunch of other like famous people in the town that they live in come together and they introduce him to the bromance book club that they have put together to where they read romance books to help them get advice on how to have a relationship with their wives and girlfriends and fiancés. <laughs> Overall it was an enjoyable read. I gave it four stars. The characters, the way they interacted, it didn't seem like they had been married for that long when they had been married for a long time. Like it came to a point where I was like, how could you have let your marriage get to this point? Like how? And that's what I feel like a lot of other people's issues are with this book. I did enjoy it though. I really loved Taya and I loved the historical romance book that Gavin is reading. I loved how much Gavin wanted to make their relationship work. I did enjoy this. It was a very enjoyable romance read for me. Then I read another romance book where the couple is already married. We have Love Her or Lose Her by Tessa Bailey. I ended up enjoying this one more than the romance book club because the reason why their marriage was on the rocks was way more believable and way more understandable to me. So this is about Rosie and Dominic and they were introduced in the first book in this series, Fixer Up. And Rosie wants to divorce Dominic because she feels like he is not paying any attention to her. They don't talk anymore. They don't like have a relationship. They just live in the same house and don't talk to each other anymore. And so she w tells him that she wants a divorce and he is baffled and he has no idea why and he's like I will do anything for you just tell me what to do to have you stay with me and 
still be my wife and so she enlists them into marriage boot camp <laughs> i really loved uh dominic's groveling in this book the only thing that kept me from giving this five stars is that ending was kind of really rushed and I don't know, it just it wasn't a favorite of mine, but I did enjoy this one nonetheless. And I really loved Rosie's character. I really want to read more about their couple going forth with the series. I ended up giving this one also a four out of five stars. Next, I read Your Dad Will Do by Katie Robert. <laughs> this one is a novella. It's only maybe like a hundred something pages. So our main character woman in this book, her boyfriend, no, her fiance, just cheated on her. And so uh, she's always had a little bit of an attraction to her fiance's dad. And so she goes to enact revenge on uh, her fiance by going to be with his dad for a whole entire weekend. So this book is that weekend. I really enjoy this. It's just a fun read. It was really fun and Katie Robert is an amazing writer. She really makes you believe what these characters are feeling in such a short amount of time. Like her books aren't very long and I feel like they're so believable in the way that she writes them. So I really did enjoy this one and I gave this one a four out of five stars. Next I read all three books in the Castles Over After series by Tessa Dare. I listened to all of these through my library through Libby. The first one is Romancing the Duke. So all three books, these women end up inheriting a castle from their dead uncle or godfather. And so this woman, she inherits a castle and is going to go live there. And she's basically destitute because her father just passed and her father was this very famous writer, but he left her with nothing. And so she goes to this castle to go make it her own and finally have a place in the world. And when she gets there, there's already a duke living there. And he's like, I live here this is my house. Like, what are you doing here? This is my house. And she's like, no, it's my house. Like, and they're trying to figure out how this came to be and how they both have the house and who actually has the house. One part that I really loved about it is that our main character Amanda is actually blind. I love that representation in books where you have the disability rep. I love Tessa Dare's writing. It's so witty and amazing for historical romances. So far, like nothing can top Tessa Dare's historical romances for me. Um, this one was really, really cute. I ended up giving this one a four out of five stars. Next in the series is Say Yes to the Marquess. So this one is about a main character woman who has been engaged to this man for eight years. And she realizes that she doesn't want to get married to him because if he's been not pushing the wedding for eight years, he obviously doesn't want to marry her. And so she goes to his brother because her fiance is at war. I'm not gonna marry your brother anymore and his brother does not want that he wants them to get married it's like him like scheming his way to try and persuade her that the wedding will happen it is a romance between actually the brother and her i enjoy this one i also gave this one four stars i gave every single book in the series four stars this one was really cute and i really liked the couple's relationship and their dynamic and there's also a dog in here that's really cute <laughs> and then i read the last book in the series which is when scott ties the knot and this is about our main character woman who has really bad anxiety when it comes to crowds and people in general so when she's 16 she doesn't want to go out into society like at all she doesn't want a debut the only way that she can think to make sure that doesn't happen is to make up a fake fiance for herself and so she tells her family that a scotsman came to her and uh they're engaged now and so she's been writing these letters to this fake scotsman that she's made up in her brain and doesn't actually exist for years until one day he pops up on her doorstep the real logan mckenzie that she's been writing these letters to and it was really 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 funny at the beginning i was a little bit iffy and didn't think that it would be that great as the other ones but as the story went along and I got to see our main character woman and how she interacted with people and like her issues with social anxiety I felt so connected to her and I really related to her story I ended up giving this one also a four out of five stars next I have another alien romance I have toxic desire by Robin Lovett <laughs> I ended up giving this one a uh, 4.5 out of five stars even though like it doesn't have the content in it to be 4.5 out of five stars this is mainly my enjoyment of the book. So this is about our two main characters. One is an alien and one is a human and they've been at war with the humans for generations. And so this woman, she is the captain of the spaceship. They ended up getting invaded in the spaceship by these aliens. She ends up getting accidentally in an escape pod by fighting one of the aliens and the escape pod crash lands onto this planet where if you're not <laughs> constantly like doing something you will be like in pain it's their like hate love relationship dealing with being on this planet 
because they can't stand each other but they have to do something to not be in pain. <laughs> it was really fun to read honestly. Next I have A Worthy Opponent by Katie Robert. This is the third book in the Wicked Villains series and this one is revolving all around Tinkerbell and Hook and it's also a marriage of convenience between the two. I really enjoy this series so each book is about a villain and a like good person from a Disney story coming together and uh it's not Disney related at all y'all 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 think maybe oh this is gonna be a cute Disney romance no <laughs> this is my favorite in the series so far I give this one a 4.5 out of 5 stars I really love this series and I can't wait to read the next one next I have Bone Cryer's Moon by Catherine Purdy I really enjoyed this one y'all this is a young adult fantasy book we have three main characters in this book we have Elise Bastion and uh, Sabine Elise and Sabine are both bone criers they're kind of like witches where they get their power from killing animals and wearing their bones and the only way you can become like a full-blown bone crier and like get all of your powers is by harvesting bones from three animals gaining their powers and their traits and then you have to go and lure your soulmate and kill them by your own hand Elise just killed her last animal and she's on the path to go and kill her soulmate. Bastion may or may not be that soulmate, but Bastion witnessed his father getting killed by a bone crier when he was a kid. His whole life has been about hunting these bone criers and trying to kill them to enact revenge. And so there's that dynamic. And then there's Sabine, who's Elise's best friend. She is very timid and shy and doesn't want to kill any animals, which is very foreign to the bone criers, obviously. So it's like the inner workings of all of that. And it's just an amazing story. I loved this. I think I'm gonna bump it up to a five stars. I know I said I'm at one of my reading vlogs, this is a 4.5. I'm bumping it up to a five. I can't wait for the next one to come out. I really, really, really recommend this book because it's also a hate to love that I really enjoyed. <laughs> and I also just enjoyed like all their characters, their character growth and their arcs and just like their personalities were amazing. This was a very well-written book that I can't wait to read the sequel to. Next is my reread of Catching Fire by Suzanne Collins. Uh, we talked about this book for the Hunger Games read-along on Lily's channel and I will link that live show down below. We are reading a Hunger Games book every month till A Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes comes out. Uh, um, in preparation for that. So this is my reread for Catching Fire. I loved it, of course. Five out of five stars. This is the second book to the Hunger Games trilogy, if you didn't know. Dystopian YA series. If you don't know about the Hunger Games, what are you doing with your life? I love this series. I love these characters. I love Katniss and Peeta is the love of my life. There you go. The last book that I'm going to talk about today, my favorite book that I read in April, Sick Kids in Love by Hannah Moskowitz. Love this book so stinking much. This is a book centered around chronic illness. This is a YA contemporary book. This is centered around our main character named Isabel who has rheumatoid arthritis and it's about her budding young adult romance with a boy that she meets in the waiting room in the hospital named Sasha. He also has a chronic illness. It was beautiful and so relatable. I loved it a lot. If y'all didn't know, I have a chronic illness called POTS and I connected to these two characters so much. I do not have either chronic illness that these main characters have, but I just related in how they talked about it so much. I talk about it way more in one of my reading vlogs and like I'm crying on camera because of how much like I related to this book and the way that these two characters talk about chronic illness and how other people perceive it. It was beautiful. If you have a chronic illness, I totally recommend reading this book. It was amazing and it will forever be one of my favorite books of all time. It's really funny because this book and another book that I read this year, Get a Life, Chloe Brown, are both about characters who have chronic illnesses and they're both my favorite books of the year so far. <laughs> Just an amazing young adult book that you can learn so much about if you don't know about chronic illness. I will be recommending this book for years to come. And there y'all have it. Those are all 19 books that I read in the month of April. Thank y'all for staying around for this very long video. Let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to. Did I convince you to read any of these books? <laughs> but anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye! Thank you.